Hey everybody, I'm Sam Webb and this is Shopify Dev Tips. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to add a custom font to your Shopify site. So let's get started. So the first thing I wanna do is show you the files that we're going to be editing. We've got fonts.liquid, which is gonna be a new file that we're creating in the snippets folder. Theme.liquid, which should already be an existing file on any Shopify store. And hero.scss, which is specific to the hero element that we made in a different video. If you haven't seen that video, I'd highly recommend you go check it out, but it's not required for this feature. So you can substitute this file with any other you know, CSS file that you have. The first question you might ask is, where would I get a custom font? And the answer to that question is, it depends. Uh, it could be a custom font that a designer has built for you and they're giving you the file for it, or you can go to a font foundry and download a font and it could be paid or free. Just make sure that you pay attention to the license to make sure that you're allowed to use that font. For today's video, I'm using Google Fonts and I'm gonna be using the Sinzel font. Click this download uh, family button, which I've already done, so I'm not gonna do it now. And what that will give me is a zip file. And as you can see on my desktop, I've got the zip file right here. Now, how you extract this file is gonna be up to you. Uh, I use a MacBook, and so for me, I can just double click it and it's gonna extract the file for me and now I have the unzipped version. If you're on Windows, you might have to get something like WinZip, but overall how you unzip this file is gonna be up to you and your operating system. And when I open that and I go to static, you'll see that I have a bunch of different uh, sizes for this font. Now this is where you need to be conscious about the, the file type that you get. So right now you see that we have a bunch of .tff files, which are not really good for the web. Instead, what we'd want is a WAF or a WAF2 file type. Luckily for us, there are ways to convert these files into different file types. So if you look at the left of my screen, I have this really small box here, and it says plop here. Uh, this is a tool called Font Plop, and I'll link it in the description. And this is another tool that uh, I use. I'm on a Mac. You might have to find a different tool if you're on uh, a Windows, but on my Mac, this is the tool that I choose to use. And this is really easy to use. I just highlight all of these fonts and then I drag them into font plop and then it'll start making uh, different folders for each of those fonts. And when I open one of them, you'll see that it has the, the .wav file and a .wav2 file in it. And now if you look up here, I have the band basic uh, file structure open. For this kind of drag and drop application, it's nice to use the folder GUI. So the place we're gonna store these files is gonna be source, Static. Before I start moving files over, I want to point out that this folder structure is specific to Workshop CLI, the advanced Gulp workflow. So if you're using a different workflow, you'll have to put it in whatever folder that they consider their static files. Or if you're doing this directly in Shopify, you'll put these files in the asset folder. Now I'm only going to move over two of these. So let's grab uh, regular and grab the WAF2 file. And then let's grab bold and grab its wall to file. And before we write any of the font code, let's hop into theme.liquid. And we wanna make sure that we include this file before our CSS, right? We wanna be able to use these fonts in our CSS. So we have to load the fonts before it. So our CSS is right here. And so we have to load the fonts above that. So now we have the file included. We don't need theme.liquid open anymore. Let's hop back into fonts. The first thing we need to do is add a style tag. And then we want to actually start including the fonts. There's a rule in CSS called font face. And the way it works is you type an at symbol and then you type font face and you put your curly brackets. And within these curly brackets is where you pull the file for a font as well as define the properties of the font. So we'll start with font family. And font family is interesting because you don't have to name it the actual name of the font, right? This is whatever you want to call it in your code but we're gonna call it the name of the font. The next thing we wanna add is source, SRC. And this is going to be the, the source of where the file comes from, right? So the URL of the file. So in here we're gonna type URL and put parentheses. And if you are wondering why I've been doing this in Liquid, this is the reason why. So we're gonna to have to use some Liquid code here to pull the font file from the asset folder. And we have Sinzel regular dot waf2 
asset URL filter to make sure it gives it the proper Shopify URL. Now when adding fonts using Fontface, this is more of a just CSS general rule. These are the only two required fields, right? You need to give it a name and you need to pull the file from somewhere. But as you saw earlier, we added two of these two fonts, the same font, Sinzel at regular and at bold. And when doing this, there are more optional fields that you can add. And one of them is font weight. And since this is regular, uh, normally the font weight for a regular sized font would be 400. So bold font family will be the same name, Sinzel. Source will be different. And font weight for a bold font is usually 700. So now let's use these. If you look at the hero and the text that's in it, we're currently using the Montserrat font. So let's change that to Sinzel. So in here we'll say font family is Sinzel. And when I refresh the page, you'll see that now we're using Sinzel font instead. Now one of the things to notice here is that this heading element versus this uh, paragraph text are using different versions of the font, right? They're both using Sinzel, but, but this paragraph is using regular while this heading is using bold. And so what's happening is when we request the normal font or at 400, 400 in the word normal or equivalent, you get the file that, for, you get the file for regular, right? Because that's how we set it up, right? When you ask for 400 or normal, you get this file. But when you ask for 700 or bold, 700 and bold are equal, you get this file. So that's all there is to add in custom fonts. If you found this video useful, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you next time.